Kiora Tato. Um, Ko Mississippi, Te Awa, no Minneapolis, Aho. To, uh, ko Brock, Tokufano. E, um, <laughs> ko Arthur, Toko Ingoa. Sorry, my first time doing that. Sorry. Uh, I'm Arthur Brock, originally from the Midwest United States. You notice I left Mountain out of that. We don't have any there. Um, so I feel like what I'm supposed to talk about is this amazing new technology uh, that we've created, Holochain, that's like way beyond blockchain and you know all that kind of stuff. But what I actually want to talk about is nature and the power of designing from living systems. And really what comes to mind, I love what Naval was saying about uh, how the early arrival of a technology is often destructive. And I would, I connect that to, because we haven't actually learned to pattern it in the flows of life, in the patterns that nature uses. And uh, that's actually what I want to talk about. Because, so, you probably already know this on some level, but all living systems, they thrive or they dwindle, they live or they die, based on the integrity of patterns of flow. And like just a quick example, if we were to block off my airflow for a few minutes here, um, this living system we call a human being would cease to be a living system. We'd break the integrities of that. We would have a bag of meat, right? The, the same stuff is here, but the integrity of the patterns of flow have been broken you literally no longer have a living system. So when you go to the doctor and they you know, check your vital signs, what they're doing is they're checking in on the health of the flows of you as a living system. Now, how do we do that for communities, countries, businesses, schools? Where's that pulse? How, what, what, are, what is it that we actually use to check in on this? I would assert I want to reclaim some language here a little bit creatively because English has this great word. I would assert that what we use are current seas. Trying to have you think of it not just as money, but literally current seas, the ability to see flows. Money is a very small part of that picture. It makes flows of um, you know, exchange of goods and services visible. But if you think of a more concrete example, actually, let me just check in for a moment. Who here has experienced, especially these kind of collective spaces, communities, businesses, living systems, where all the stuff was there, but the flows weren't quite right? You did not have a thriving living system, a thriving community, country, so you've run into these issues. What if there were ways that you could learn to make very small shifts that would, over time of repeating these small shifts, actually produce massive changes in the pattern? Um, that's what I'm interested in because from a living systems view, there's some massive changes we need to be making. And um, so I just want to take an example again, something that's a little bit familiar, like a school. Um, normally, we're used to uh, the, the currencies that get used in a school is like the degree is a reputation currency. We have, gr we have uh, um, credits to be able to count the different stacks of participation in different domains, right? And grades to measure your performance in those things to make those flows visible. Your transcript is like your balance sheet, right? You can see how those are currencies we use. We create symbol systems all the time to coordinate flows on all scales. A few years ago, my son's school had a little bit of a crisis. It was luckily a little bit of a progressive school, so I had a lot of creative room when this happened. I was asked to step in as the director temporarily and um, reboot it, basically save the school. I said I would do that if I could rejigger the educational model. And uh, it was for self-directed learning, like the, the kids actually design their own education. So the kind of currencies that we put in place were like little dashboards on the wall. The kids had a little dashboard with sticky notes in different columns, and they'd put their intentions and projects there. And it would make visible what kind of support they needed from the staff. It would make visible to the other kids what things they might want to participate with. It ignited the passion of kids that were a little slower, a little less clear 
to find their intentions in projects, as they started seeing the kids that were doing that really have their passion awakened, they, like, they didn't want to miss out. They wanted to try it out. And uh, so that's an example of like a currency hack. And this is work that I do all the time in, in hacking currencies. And a lot of my inspiration comes from this naturalist in Northern California called Paul Kraffel, who is a kind of eco-warrior that goes out into the world with a small hand trowel. He goes out in rainstorms and observes patterns of flow and just makes small, subtle shifts. And he does this every rainstorm. He does this over time. He has healed complete hillsides, watersheds, ecosystems by learning the kinds of little nudges that to be able to make. And I would assert we all have the capacity, we all have that power to make those little nudges if we can learn to see them. Unfortunately, I can't really go a lot deeper on that today, uh, out of time, but uh, would invite you to, to come and join in the conversation. Like, as I mentioned, Holochain, that's a technology designed on the patterns of nature. Um, I would love to explore any of those kinds of things, but just like engage with living systems design. If, imagine if our economies, our currencies, our markets were attuned with the patterns that nourish life. That's what I invite you to join me in. Thank you.